this is part two of Reflections on 2020, why we need to prepare our families, churches, and communities for Christ, for what is to come. I'm Brian Steyer, and the ba Big Hatch Baptist Association has had some historic landmark success, including establishing our own union university. So we have the potential to become a pilot project that can model our greatest strength as Southern Baptist, cooperation as one body of Christ. The best part of the major majority of this training is it can be done in the comfort of your homes. There will be an intersection of your church with the local firehouse or American Red Cross to provide first aid, CPR, automatic external defibrillator, and narcotic overdose training. If your church participates, then I will ask you to acquire an automatic external defibrillator, an AED. This life-saving device, paired with several trained volunteers doing chest compressions, will cost less than repaving your parking lot. And someone will be given an 80% chance of living versus an 80% chance of dying in your church building. Those receiving narcotic overdose training will become part of the solution and will receive these kits for free from the state of Tennessee under a federal grant program. Gentlemen, you talk about revival, but I have seen people near the edge of death headed on the broad highway to hell come back to life and be given a second chance to come to know their Creator and be restored to serve Him. Praise God for new life and life abundantly. Let me give you the gift of awareness now. The Southern Baptist Convention is the third largest disaster relief organization in the United States. It is the second largest faith-based organization right behind the Salvation Army. The American Red Cross is the first con with a congressional charter to provide disaster relief, but just like Southern Baptist, it has not provided any federal funding to complete this mission. Did you know that? Tennessee Baptist Disaster Relief relies on individuals and local churches contributing to the Golden Offering or do donating directly or online to sponsor everything that these volunteers do absolutely free. These are missionaries who may literally be serving in your backyard if we have a downed tree or a wet drywall from flood water that rose to come into our homes. In times of crisis and disaster, you may expect that your local government will not be able to provide all of your needs, yet you expect that they will, and that's not true. The reality is that your community is going to look at you, its faith leaders, for practical, tangible, physical help and emotional and spiritual care that even those who are here with formal seminary training have not adequately prepared for. The federal and state governments have included you in the co and your congregations in the National Response Plan that most individuals do not even have on their radar. The first responders will be overwhelmed, asking for additional resources to come and serve from throughout the state and nation, like the Gatlinburg wildfires. However, those resources should begin with deploying local church teams to serve their neighbors out of love for the Lord and love for their neighbors. The two greatest commandments according to Jesus the Christ. So, this begins with the practical application of the Good Samaritan who stopped along the road to pour in the oil and the wine into a wounded stranger. It is not a religious right, but it is the right thing to do. He practically demonstrated the golden rule by doing unto others as if you would have them do unto you. He even paid the innkeeper to look after him. How many of us would have go above and beyond today in paying someone's hospital bill in its entirety? This is the same idea that expressed in crisis and disaster relief ministry. The parable has three men walk by a wounded stranger too busy or perhaps they did not care for some one reason or another but one who was hated the least likely man to stop paused and expressed genuine human compassion 
What about you? What about you? What about your people you lead? Do you, do you, do they have a similar compassion for the wounded man beside the road or wounded woman beside the road? If so, then form a crisis and disaster relief ministry because it is the right thing to do. First, appraise oneself. Take a good look in the mirror and say, am I ready? Is my family ready? The first 100 years of the early church eagerly anticipated the return of Christ, the king in it with a sense of urgency. So in the same sense, I urge you to prepare your hearts for this service. If Christ came back today, then does every member of your family know him? Would they be part of his kingdom and protected by the judgment seat of Christ, or will they experience the wrath of God who has provided second chances? But the world has ignored or rejected him. When that trumpet sounds and the roll is called up yonder, will your name be on that roll? Will your family's name be on that roll? This is the biggest thing that you must be prepared for above all, and other things fall secondary to that. Practical step two, towards the readiness and service. I want you to download the American Red Cross First Aid app to your iPhone and Android right now. Pause this video, download it right now. I know that most pastors would discourage you from playing with your phone in service. However, this is a video. Take advantage of that. But I'm a chaplain, so pull out your phone now, go to your app store, download the Red Cross First Aid app. It has videos, quizzes, and tells the person playing on their phone how to get training and certification online and in person for first aid and disaster preparedness. Email me your contact information as your church pastors and deacons who might be a good candidate as your disaster ministry leader. My email project for, th for this project is bstyer at liberty.edu. Again, that's bstyer at liberty.edu. B-S-T-Y-E-R at liberty.edu. My phone number is 901-828-9385. Once you email me, then I will send you additional information about this project, including resources. I can help you uh, with uh, your appointed ministry leader to recruit volunteers and then train them in this disaster disciple curriculum. I will gladly come to your church in person to present this from your pulpits either midweek or on Sunday. We are already implementing many of these components with our fire recruits here at Mason, so it is, it is possible to take someone who has no training and make them ready. I will be asking about what ministries you already have in place, and because of this, each of us need to have the ability to refer disaster clients to resources that they can recover. I'm blessed that recently one of our fire clients and his family members who lost their home had these resources. Keeling Baptist Church responded in love, providing food, clothing, and shelter for this man and his family. They went above and beyond to provide gifts under the Christmas tree. Anglo-Christians practically demonstrated the love of Christ to an African-American fire client that in the nation who was teetering on the balance of racial injustice and disparate poverty showed that we are equal in Christ's love. Three, plan an in-person Southern Baptist disaster relief training and specialty class training at a larger church in our association.